Major funding for NJTV News is provided in part by the members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. And PSE&G, we make things work for communities. Tonight on NJTV News, the governor claims unprecedented improvement in Camden schools and issues a warning. We're in Camden, where Governor Christie warned school parents putting a moratorium on more charter schools is like committing a sin. These shoes represent people who took their lives in the state of New Jersey, and at this suicide prevention conference taking place behind me, we met a couple who lost their son. Hear their message to parents watching. They served our country bravely. Some became prisoners of war. Others never returned home. They're being honored today in Homedale, along with the family members they left behind. Plus, it shuttered three years ago, never reopened. Now there's talk of another potential owner for the former Revel Casino. And they're back, putting on a show in the Atlantic. See why the Jersey Shore is perfect for those bottle-nosed dolphins. Those stories and more next on NJTV News. from the Agnes Barris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway Center in Newark. This is NJTV News with Mary Alice Williams. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Michael Hill. Mary Alice Williams is off today. Governor Christie was in Camden today, patting his administration on the back four years after taking over Camden schools and now claiming the results are unprecedented improvements. And he went even further and issued a warning about those who would impede that progress and advise parents on what to do about it. Senior correspondent Brenda Flanagan reports. So what are we finding when you see the word left? While fifth graders worked on math word problems across the hall, Governor Christie took a verbal victory lap in the multi-purpose room of Camden's newest Renaissance school, Kip Whittier. It's been four years since the state took over Camden schools and Christie praised the results. And we've got some strikingly different results to talk about. 49% graduation rate back in 2012, 70% graduation rate in 2016. The governor's visit to a public school built in 1910 and just renovated and reopened by KIPP demonstrates a remarkable change to the face of education in Camden, where three nonprofit groups now operate. The number of students enrolled at charter and renaissance schools is more than tripled since the 2009-2010 school year, and test scores keep climbing. Christie cited one charter, Uncommon Schools Camden Prep. In math, those very same students went from 2.8% being proficient to 49% being proficient. Don't tell me a great teacher in a great school with involved parents can't make a difference. That's the only thing that will make a difference. Christie also noted the state shut down failing charter schools. He lavished praise on his hand-picked superintendent, Payman Rohanifard, and outgoing Mayor Dana Red, but warned parents to beware politicians who advocate for moratoriums on charter and Renaissance school expansion. Any prohibition on the growth of school choice in our state should be met with nothing but resistance. They're committing a sin a sin by stopping our children from reaching their fullest God-given potential, and no one has the right to do that. New Jersey's largest teachers union retorted, Governor Christie's terrified of a moratorium because he knows that when people see what's really happening with charter and renaissance schools in New Jersey, they will know that his failed strategy is hurting New Jersey students and communities. We asked Camden parents their opinion on charters. They're amazing. My kids can read more proficiently. They write better. Their math scores are amazing. I love it. I'm just not a fan of some of the charter schools personally. Yeah. And my daughter, she t attends Camden High, and I think I like that school better than the you charter You like the public schools? Yes. The governor promised he'll keep his eye on Camden even after he leaves office. I'll be moving from a front row seat to the cheap seats. But I look forward to watching it. And all the while, be assured that I'll continue to do exactly what I've done for the last eight years. I'll be rooting for Camden. Even as the governor warned parents against the evils of political influence, the governor's seat and the whole legislature is up for election in November. So keeping politics out of education in New Jersey is highly unlikely. 
In Camden, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News. The latest now on Equifax and what states are demanding. But first, some unemployment numbers. Rhonda Schaffler is standing by with the business report. Rhonda, are these jobless numbers typical for this time of year? You know, Michael, it does change month to month, but we can tell you the rate is lower than where it was a year ago, still moving in the wrong direction. Unemployment rate rose to 4.5 percent. That's up from 4.2 percent, according to preliminary estimates. Overall, employment did remain stable in the Garden State in August after strong job gains in June and July. Hiring was strong last month in a couple of industries, including tourism, education and health services, and construction. New Jersey companies added nearly 22,000 jobs over the summer months. The development company owned by the family of President Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, will be working on an oceanfront project in Long Branch. The city council has okayed a $238 million plan to remake Pier Village. Kushner Companies and Extel Development will build 269 luxury condos along with a hotel and retail space. While Trump's son-in-law has divested himself from many of the Kushner dealings since joining the administration, he still has a financial stake in Pier Village, according to the Asbury Park Press. Farther south, there may be a buyer interested in Atlantic City's old Revel Casino. Press of Atlantic City is reporting a New York investment firm has offered to buy the property for $225 million. The Revel's owner has been in a battle with city officials over permits for the property, which was supposed to reopen with a new name. But the latest planned reopening date came and went with no word on a new timetable. New Jersey's Attorney General Christopher Perino has joined dozens of other state AGs who are calling on Equifax to stop charging customers fees to monitor their credit following that massive data breach. In the letter, the Attorney General said Equifax is seemingly using its own data breach as an opportunity to sell services to breach victims. Under pressure, Equifax has agreed to waive fees to freeze credit. The latest hospital merger in New Jersey took place yesterday as Kennedy Health in South Jersey officially merged with Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. South Jersey residents will receive care from the same physicians and staff and have access to clinical trials for new cancer treatments. On Wall Street, stocks ended in record territory once again. The Dow is up close to 65 points. And those are our top business stories. A nine-figure appropriation for the Gateway Tunnel Project. Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen added $900 million to a $1.2 trillion spending bill and then beat back other Republicans who wanted to strip it from the bill. Freelingheisen chairs the House Appropriations Committee and says Gateway is critical to the nation's economy. The money could be part of the federal government's portion to build new rail tubes under the Hudson so the sandy damaged tubes can be repaired. New Jersey and New York lawmakers and governors met with the president last week, but got no commitments from the president. Startling numbers tonight on suicides from the CDC, numbers that show the rate of preteens and younger teens ending their own lives. Who's doing something to reverse the trend? Leah Michigan found out. Kenny was just a great kid. He had a kind heart. He was all about helping other people. He was thoughtful. He was considerate. He was a hard worker. He was a, a good student in school. And then all of a sudden, we started seeing a switch in his schoolwork, mostly. He had a mental health disorder. He was hospitalized over six times. He struggled for over three years trying to get well. We had been helping him. We had been trying to find a solution for him. Unfortunately, we just didn't. We ran out of time. The last conversation I had was, Kenny, I love you. And the last words he said to me is, Mom, I love you too. Kenny Baker was 19 years old when he committed suicide. It was a horrific experience. I don't want anybody to ever go through ever again. We spoke with Kenny's parents, Trisha and Kurt Baker, outside a suicide prevention conference. They share their son's story with their organization, Attitudes in Reverse, as a way to start a conversation about mental illness. Kenny suffered from anxiety and depression. Suicide is a symptom of an illness, and that's one of the main messages that we're trying to get across to children, to, to parents. It's not anything that they need to be embarrassed or afraid about. The sooner you start treatment, the more likely the success of that treatment. 
According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the suicide rate among children aged 10 to 14 years old more than doubled between 2007 and 2014. That is the first time suicide has passed car crashes as a leading cause of death for that age group. A lot of students, I feel, are um, pressured to be perfect. And that, that's got to be very hard to deal with. Shauna Moses says she understands because she also struggles with a mental health disorder and has attempted suicide. When people say they failed at suicide, I hope that phrase goes away because that's not a failure. It's a sign that they need to be here. At the conference, there were 269 pairs of shoes laid out, representing the number of 10 to 24 year olds in New Jersey who took their lives between 2013 and 2015. Each shoe has a tag with thoughts that go through the minds of people of all ages who have suicidal thoughts. This is actually a pair of Kenny's shoes. There's so much pressure in being perfect and Kenny put that pressure on himself. Yeah, we believe he woke up every day fighting to stay alive. All are words and signs Kenny Baker left behind. Get help, get help, find out what works for you. Um, there, there are solutions that are out there. But those last words, his father says, are what he thinks his son would have said today. In Belmead, Leah Mishkin, NJTV News. The corruption trial of New Jersey's senior senator is the topic of this week's On the Record with chief political correspondent Michael Aaron. One of his guests compared Senator Bob Menendez to the late state senator Jim Whelan. Jim Whalen was spoken of as a man of unimpeachable integrity. And it seems to me that whatever happens in Newark at Senator Menendez's trial, he has squandered his integrity. Um, one of the saddest things it seems to me about, about this whole situation is that he's not really saying he didn't do these things. He's just saying they're, they're illegal. They're not illegal. And, um, you know, it seems to me that when we go to the polls, we deserve Jim Whalen's, not Bob Menendez's. You can watch Michael's entire interview Saturday evening at 6.30 and again Sunday morning at 10.30. Big bucks to boost business education that tops tonight's Garden State Express. Our first stop, Glassboro, another seven-figure donation to Rowan University. This one from the William Rohrer Foundation. His daughter Linda chairs the school's board of trustees. She announced a $5 million donation to the Rohrer College of Business at Rowan. The money is for students to pursue studies in the Business Honors College. It brings the foundation's total to $12 million to the business school, $19 million overall to Rowan. The college's dean says a strong business honors program really just helps us differentiate ourselves and to attract even greater students. Next to Stone Harbor, look what Zeke Orzek captured off the Jersey Shore. Video of a pod of dolphins frolicking in the Atlantic. Onlookers watched in amazement. It's another year of dolphin sightings off New Jersey. Last year, the Marine Mammal Stranding Center reported the warm water, great quality, and plentiful bait fish to feed on make South Jersey ideal for dolphins. All of that has led to more sightings, and the center says bigger pods. It's a field day for cruise ships and tourists aboard those dolphin watching excursions. Finally, to Asbury Park, what a treat for ocean watchers. Not one, but two tagged great white sharks showed up on the Jersey Shore. The nonprofit group Old Search reports the electronic tag of the four foot pup fin pinged Thursday morning off Asbury Park. It did so earlier this month as well. The tag shows Finn had a 272 mile jagged swim all the way from Montauk on the tip of Long Island. And a few hours later, researchers got another ping. This time, the five foot 90 pound Amagansett. She was swimming near the same area as Finn. She was last pinged in August, also off Long Island. You can call it a two for, for shock fans. And that's our Garden State Express for this Friday, September 15th, 2017. Something up in your neighborhood? Tip us off.
It's time for New Jersey to reclaim the hundreds of millions of dollars in TV and film production. That was the theme of a panel eager to bring back New Jersey tax credits to the film industry. Our Lindsay Christian spoke to Fort Lee Film Commission's Tom Myers about the effort. You participated in a symposium along with Senator Weinberg uh -huh. and the mayor of Fort Lee, casting directors and producers, um, all of whom are passionate about bringing the tax credit back to New Jersey, specifically for film and television production. There are so many reasons why it would be beneficial to the state. Tell me. Well, it'll be huge for the state, and not just cities like Fort Lee, uh, but you're talking about a positive impact to a place like Atlantic City. Uh, that was the entertainment capital in America into the 19th and early 20th century. This could reinvent Atlantic City if we had enough uh, an aggressive tax credit like or better than New York. You would see studio space in Atlantic City in addition to North Jersey. Uh, it benefits the community in terms of jobs. It benefits the community in terms of money they bring in uh, to restaurants, to rent locations. Uh, we saw that in Fort Lee when we still had a tax credit and the Law and Order Special Victims Unit came in a lot. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce was so thrilled with the economic benefit, they gave us a specific award, the Fort Lee Film Commission, for working to bring that production in. And residents also took part where their houses were rented. Um, so it was a huge uh, benefit to our economy, and we could see that as a state benefit. And on top of that, uh, this is the uh, industry that was born in the state of New Jersey, the film industry. The first uh, studio in the, in the world was in West Orange, New Jersey, the Black Mariah, Thomas Edison. The first American film town was Fort Lee, where Universal and Fox started. Um, so it's bringing an industry, in a way, back home. And people who say it can't be done, look to what New York has done. Look what right. to Governor Cuomo has done to the point where they have more production of uh, television series than ever before, mm -hmm. and they rival, if not surpass, Los Angeles. And I think they wow. do surpass Los Angeles now. And that's beneficial to the economy uh, of New York, and we are getting nothing of that now. So you're saying, don't go to New York, come to New Jersey. It's going to benefit not only the state, the community, it'll benefit the people. 14,000 industry professionals live in New Jersey. So on a personal level, how would it affect all of these people? It would be great for them. It would be great for the state because they're currently, as Senator Weinberg pointed out, they're paying income taxes to New York and they would be paying to New Jersey. Um, Listen, there'll always be production in New York. We're not going to go to war with New York, but right now, we pretty much put a knife in our own industry by ourselves here or our political leadership uh, in the past eight years because we are not even competing. Um, we have such a diverse population. We have so many cities like Patterson and Newark that would benefit. In addition to rural areas, the reason these film companies started in Fort Lee and came here was because of diverse locations. They could turn their camera and see the cliffs of the Palisades, right. turn around and see a rural road, turn around and see a small town, all within close proximity. Yeah. We offer the same thing as the state today. And in terms of the argument that, well, the tax credit is not beneficial, the only corporations that haven't benefited from a tax credit is the one that was born here, which is absurd. And just to put a point to this, at least $800 million in a, a pilot program in lieu of taxes has been uh, given by the state uh, sports authority to American Dream Mall. $800 million. Wow. New York has a $400 million tax credit with a 30 percent threshold which that money is not, you're not giving them $400 million, but what you're doing is you're putting a threshold and giving breaks in taxes. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're just $800 million with the mall, why can't we take half of that and benefit not just northern New Jersey, but a place like Atlantic City? I'm so keen on this, even though I'm born up here. Yeah. Yeah. Atlantic City, with West Hall and board with a convention hall, they have so much to offer, and this could be a new life for Atlantic City, but we need the political leadership to step up to the plate, and I think they will in 2018, and get the tax credit back, but get a tax credit comparable to New York City. And again, I can't emphasize enough, all the tax credit that were given to Ravel in Atlantic City, and what's happened to that? Right. It's shuttered now. Um, give tax credits to the film and television industry, and you will create jobs in the state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. These people will pay taxes in the state, and will benefit every community in the state. Uh, and, and, and at the end of the day, it's going to benefit New Jersey because it's going to put a different face on New Jersey, which I think will help us in every way. Woo. Well, you are certainly passionate about this, Tom. I wanted to just wrap and talk about a 2005 film that was right. shot here, actually, uh, just a few blocks away um, on the intersection of at the intersection of Ferry Street. Right. Another portion of the scene um, also 
filmed at the, at the bottom of the Bayonne Bridge, right. War of the World, starring right. Tom Cruise, um, directed by Steven Spielberg. I understand that they gave back to the community after they produced the film. Tell me they, about that. They, they, they fixed up a ball field, and then Spielberg and, and Cruz themselves paid for a huge scoreboard that, as far as we know, is still being operated. They are good neighbors. They become a positive part of the community, whether it's uh, Spielberg and Cruz or whether it's a smaller independent production or it's a documentary, right. or it's a student filmmaker or independent film. They all leave the town better than it was when they came. I found that to be true in Fort Lee with huge productions like sure. uh, Law and Order Special Victims Unit and much smaller productions. And uh, they're good neighbors. And in a sense, when they come to New Jersey and shoot, they're really coming home because this is where all the magic started. Any other state in the union, if, if Iowa had our history in terms of film, their state flag would have a reel of film on it. We right. don't appreciate <laughs> that. We are the birthplace of the most important industry this nation ever created, the film industry. And I think by bringing it back here in a big way, we could, uh, we could help ourselves and help the industry and help the average taxpayer in the state of New Jersey. Well said, Tom. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And I know that you and your colleagues are really looking to our next governor to reinstate that tax credit. Absolutely. We're very, we're, hopefully, we'll celebrate with you and NJTV <laughs> when whoever the next governor is signs that tax credit <laughs> bill and we'll, we'll start going to work again. Sounds good. <laughs> thank you so much. They go off to serve, to protect, to fight. As we know, though, they don't always come home, but they undoubtedly deserve remembering. And that's what the Department of New Jersey American Gold Star Mothers does. Lauren Wanko shows us. The last thing we said to each other, I love you, and I'll talk to you later. And I didn't know that that was the last time that we would have said, I love you. Eula and Carson Morris lost their son in 2011. Staff Sergeant Carson Morris was killed. He served this country all over the world and nothing happened. And then four days after coming back to the United States, he was killed. The Freehold resident was killed instantly by a hit and run driver near Fort Bragg where he was stationed. In an instant, Eula became a Gold Star mother. I won't wish this on anyone. The family came from Barbados in search of a better life. Staff Sergeant Morris spent more than 17 years in the Army. We have to support the decisions our children make. They're doing something they love because my son loved being in the military. Eula has found comfort in the Department of New Jersey American Gold Star Mothers. The organization's mission is to find strength in the fellowship of other Gold Star Mothers who want to keep the memory of their sons and daughters alive. They do this by giving back to veterans, wounded warriors and their families, educating school children about the sacrifices our service members have made and more. The Morris family hopes to one day establish a fund to honor Carson, who they affectionately call Junior. This morning at the New Jersey Vietnam Era Museum and Educational Center, the family paid tribute to their boy. Prisoners of war, those missing in action, and other Gold Star mothers were also recognized at today's ceremony. When you get up and brush your teeth and have breakfast every day, you have to remember that uh, freedom is not free and that people have sacrificed for your freedom. And the best way that you can honor them is to remember them. What do you miss most about them? Everything. Everything. It, it isn't today that we don't remember him. At every meal, he's at the dining room table. His picture's at the dining room table at every meal. Carson left behind a wife, five children, both parents, siblings, and other family members. It really saddens me because he didn't get to see his daughters, his children graduate from high school into college. He won't be able to walk his daughter down the aisle. 
though he'll continue to live on in their hearts and minds forever. In Homedale, I'm Lauren Wonko, NJTV News. And now a new feature to help you know Jersey better. Some noteworthy facts from tonight's program that help you know Jersey. Camden's graduation rate rose from 49% in 2010 to 70% in 2016. 1.2 trillion house spending bill includes $900 million for the Gateway Project. New Jersey is calling on Equifax to stop charging customers fees to monitor their credit. And a private investment firm has offered to buy former Revel Casino for $225 million. If there's someone who you'd like to know to get to know Jersey, Sherry, use hashtag New Jersey. Next week on NJTV News, the link between poverty and racism in the state. I'm Michael Hill. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. J. Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of New Jersey residents and businesses for more than 100 years. And Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association.